very wise man years ago wrote in the book of Ecclesiastes that there's a time for everything. A time to be born, a time to die, a time to plant and a time to pluck up, a time to pick up stones and a time to cast stones, a time for war, a time for peace, a time to speak and a time to remain silent. And if we think about our lives, I'm standing here today on a beach in Florida. We've been here for a week and that week now has flown by and our time in this part of the United States is almost over. We recognize the nature of time. It's passing, it's fleeting, and you can never go back and seize the day from yesterday. We are only promised the future, I mean, but our stewardship is today. And there's a time for everything. And that's the lesson of Ecclesiastes. And then God tells us that he spoke everything into existence. And from the scriptures we learn that God is outside of time, matter and space and energy. A day to God is as a thousand years and a thousand years as a day. And you and I live within the time, matter, space and energy continuum. All you and I know when we were born is the material universe around us. But Jesus Christ tells us that there's more. That what really matters is the transcendent. In fact, he said the flesh matters nothing, it's the spirit that counts. And so we have a sense of belonging, identity, time. I remember when I was a little boy. I remember the day we were married. I remember the births of our children. And I wonder what's going to happen in the next 10, 15, 20 years. In fact, I'm 65 the exact same age that my grandfather died. So his time was allotted. And it really makes you feel somewhat vulnerable when you recognize what a sort of a stewardship have I been in the time that you've given me. Jesus had finished his ministry. He was resurrected from the dead and he was with his disciples for the very last time. And if there's anything you want to say when you're standing in a railway platform saying goodbye to somebody, as the disciples were with Jesus, he gave them some instructions. He said, remain in Jerusalem until you're clothed with power on high. And standing there 2,000 years ago, the disciples asked him a question. They said, are you at this time going to restore the kingdom to Israel? They knew that Jesus was the Messiah the Son of God, the Son of Man. The prophecy said of the Son of God that he would be King of Kings and Lord of Lords, that every knee would bow, that every tongue confess that Jesus is Lord. So are you at this time going to give the Romans a big wallop and let Israel rule in the glorious kingdom reality? And Jesus gave them a curious answer. He said, it's not for you to know the times and seasons that the Father has appointed by his own authority. That was not the answer they were expecting. Jesus will return at the right time, according to his father's timing. And yet, within 10 days of that conversation, at the appointed time, the Holy Spirit fell on those disciples on the day of Pentecost. And those disciples were transformed from from fishermen asking complex and sometimes unnecessary questions to where they spoke and lived and testified of Jesus for the remaining days that they had by the power and the presence of the Holy Spirit that transcended the material, materialistic age in which we all live. And so scripture tells us that you and I are given a gift of every day and you and I are stewards of everything that God has given us and that ultimately judgment is coming. So you and I live today and move and breathe and have our relationships and, our, and the things that occupy our time, 24 hours a day. But the time is coming when all who've ever lived and breathed, the good and the not so good and the malevolently evil will stand before the judgment seat of God in Jesus. And scripture says that judgment is now on the household of God. That everything that you and I say and do is accounted against Jesus Christ's sacrifice. 
and that he is our high priest because he paid for our debt speaks in our favour outside of our time, matter and space limitations. So what do you do with your time, your talent, your treasure? And I could add to that your talk. In fact, Jesus says, man will give account of every idle word they speak. And so this idea of time, we have 24 hours each day and there's a strong impetus on redeeming the time every day, making the most of the use of the time that you have. <coughs> and this is brought into the seasons that we have. For example, the lunar month is about 28 days. We have the sun for the four seasons of the year and you and I mark our time on this earth by the years as they slip by. And on a smaller micro level, we are given an appointed time every week. God says six days are yours to work and to labor and to create. On the seventh day, remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. And God invites us into, he uses time to test our faith and invite us into his reality by using time a 24-hour period from Friday night to Saturday night to come to him and rest and worship. And on a physical level, it's very hard to understand what is time. If God tells us that a thousand years is like a day to him, and a day is like a thousand years, and that the flesh doesn't matter, it's the spirit that counts, and that God exists outside time, matter and space, and through Christ he spoke everything into existence over six days, and then sustains the universe by the word of his power. I don't think we ever think of what time is. We see mathematical equations trying to understand gravity and time, but for you and I it's sufficient that our time is governed by day and night and the seasons of the year. There is a season and a time to be born. And there's also a season and a time to die. And while evolutionists tell us that we're a blip of consciousness in a vast universe that has no meaning, purpose or identity, Jesus Christ tells us through the scriptures, by the Holy Spirit, that God spoke and everything was created in six days. And so you and I are created with a, a time parameter a time to be born, a time to die, a time for war, a time for peace, a time for love, and a time for hate. And we're told that Jesus is coming to reign on this earth for a thousand years. I believe it's physical, literal, but it can also be metaphorical. The vast amount of time of God said that I will accomplish all that I want to accomplish in its time. Remember Abraham and Sarah waited until they were, she was 90 and he was 100 before God gave them a, the child of promise? What about Zechariah and Elizabeth? God demonstrates that time is not a problem for him and what he promises will come true. And he tells us to trust him. Those who wait on the Lord will be redeemed. Abraham and Sarah learnt what the progress of time is against the bi their biological clocks. So did Zechariah and Elizabeth. Imagine giving a birth to a baby at 90 years of age without the technologies in vitro fertilisation. When your biological time is over, in fact scripture says nothing is impossible to God. God has a transcendent and wonderful purpose. And he invites us to that through Jesus Christ. There is a time coming when everyone will stand before the judgment seat of God. In fact, Jesus says, don't be amazed at this. John chapter 5, verse 28. An hour is coming, or the time is coming, when all who are in their graves will hear his voice and come forth. Those who have done good to resurrection of life, and those who've done evil to a resurrection of judgment. He tells us that that appointed time is coming and that should speak to all of us. 
On which side of history do you want to be? A great judgment is coming. Men will give account, says Jesus, of every idle word they speak. Every stone that you threw or every stone that you collected will be taken into account. Every word you spoke or every word you did not speak and should have spoken will be taken into account. There is a great judgment coming. And the, my thought that I want to leave you today as my time in Florida is almost over and we're flying to Dallas for another conference next week. You and I have been given stewardship and Jesus has returned to heaven until the appointed time and he's given us the opportunity to build and make and create. And the greatest activity that we could ever be involved in is at the relationship level. Because most of the wars and the bloodshed on this earth is because of a misuse of time and a misunderstanding of the transcendent reality that the time is coming when all those who sleep in the dust of the earth will rise again. Now imagine yourself standing before the judgment seat of God. The judge is Jesus. And if Jesus is your high priest and he is your advocate, he will look at you and say, well done, good and faithful servant. In your life you received me, you believed me, you obeyed me and you testified about me. I will reward you, my reward is with me. In fact, Revelation says, Behold, says Jesus, I am coming quickly. And the time factor is, is as if it's already happened. In fact, Paul says, we are already as good as seated in the heavenly places. I am coming quickly, says Jesus, and my reward is with me to give to each one according to what he has done. And if Jesus is your advocate and he is in your judge, you are on the right side of history. But unless you receive Jesus and believe in his name and confess your sins, you are then on the wrong side of history. And you will face the second death from which there is no more redemption or resurrection. You and I now live in the continuum of time, matter and space. I notice here that the sun is setting. The day is almost gone. Tomorrow will be a new day. And Jesus says, don't worry about tomorrow because tomorrow has cares of its own. Seek first his kingdom and his righteousness today. And all the things that distract us in the materialistic world, the food, the clothing, the shelter, Jesus says, those who seek after them, your heavenly father will provide. Now heavenly father, all the time, numbers the various hairs on our head. He knows us intimately. And the time is coming when we will meet our maker. I want to encourage you to make the most of the time that God has given you. Time, talent, and treasure. And we can to add that, our words, what we say and do. So in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, on behalf of the Church of God Seventh Day, standing on this beautiful beach in Florida, I'm your brother, John Classic. Thank you.